I'm John Batchelor. This is the John Batchelor Show. Gordon Chang of The Daily and Forbes.com is here with me, and we're joined by John Bolton, a former ambassador to the United Nations from the United States, a senior fellow at the American Enterprise Institute, publishing in the Washington Times within these hours, how Bin Laden's death, heartily welcomed by the American people and by friends of freedom everywhere, does not change the present landscape for the most threatened democracy on the planet, not India, but Israel, uh, living always with the possibility of martyrdom attacks and also much more state-sponsored terrorism from Iran and Damascus and other states in the region that are in the higher of Tehran. Mr. Bolton, John, a very good evening to you. Bin Laden's death, these last 10 years, he's been a source of disruption to the whole world in constant worry about Al-Qaeda and terror attacks. But his passing does not make it easier or safer for Israel, is how I read your piece in the Washington Times. Do I read you correctly? No, exactly. The forces that are beginning to coalesce against Israel are, are really uh, well beyond Obama's uh, orbit and, and much more powerful. If you look at the changes in Egypt and some other countries right around Israel, if you look at Iran's continuing pursuit of nuclear weapons, uh, the threat to Israel uh, is completely unaffected by uh, Osama bin Laden's killing. John, I noticed that Cameron, the Prime Minister of England, has talked about uh, recognizing a Palestinian state. That's, the, that's still going forward and it's completely unaffected by what's happened in the last couple of days, right? Right, and I think the situation there has definitely gotten worse. We've seen Egypt uh, now, with the Mubarak regime overthrown, broker the agreement just uh, formally signed today in Cairo between Hamas and Fatah. You know, for those who thought that Fatah had given up terrorism, their their desperate effort to maintain relevance led them into this uh, agreement with uh, Hamas. So now they're allied with the terrorist group, uh, and and even much stronger, given that Egypt has uh, eliminated the blockade between Egypt and the Gaza Strip that uh, Mubarak put in place. So Hamas is much stronger. The Egyptian Brotherhood in Egypt is much stronger, and Israel is that much more threatened. Ten years ago, when bin Laden launched this attack on the United States, on New York and Washington, uh, were we in a m less dangerous world, John Bolton, or were we ignorant of how dangerous the world is? It, it, in my education of these last ten years, I have learned that there is a library of people who want to cut the throats of the United States of America. Were they in place in 9-11-2001? Well, I don't think they were all in place, but I think the elements were there for it, and... Uh, you know, it's like saying, was the United States more at risk on December the 6th, 1941, or on December the 8th, 1941? Well, the difference, of course, was the attack on Pearl Harbor. The difference was the attack on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. Uh, but but this, this has been moving in the direction of... Uh, of problems for the United States and its and its friends throughout the Middle East for a long time, uh, and and I continue to see those signs uh, growing and and the threat increasing again with uh, Bin Laden gone or not. Now make no mistake, the administration is going to try and say basically you know this problem's over, Al Qaeda is defeated. Uh, it, it's a, it was a small irrelevant group. We'll be able to negotiate with the Taliban in Afghanistan. We can have a substantial drawdown of NATO forces this summer. It's okay to finish the withdrawal from Iraq. You, you can see how this is going to play out, and it, it, that, that, that simply increases the danger. So if anything, uh, Osama bin Laden's killing is going to accelerate Obama's effort to decrease America's influence in the region. I want to focus on what we've learned these last days about Abbottabad, Pakistan, where bin Laden was in a compound uh, very close to the west point of Pakistan, to uh, retired military officers, retired ISI officers on the main highway to Peshawar, a resort community with a golf course and polo ponies outside, 100 mi uh, to the north of Islamabad. What I've learned is told me, John, that that the, it's impossible to accept the ISI and the Pakistan military's explanation of an intelligence failure, that bin Laden was living here, uh, often traveling by armored SUV on the highways with open sight lines. It's also, and Gordon and I have discussed this not, uh, tonight, it's also very difficult to accept the fact that if Islamabad or uh, Rawalpindi knew that their close ally, Beijing, didn't know, and their close working relationship with Riyadh didn't know. Now, you have far more experience than I'll ever have in the world of diplomatic relations between uh, adversarial states of the United States. Can we imagine that Islamabad is so good they could keep this secret 
from Beijing or from Riyadh, John? Well, the, the first point is it's absolutely clear that ISI uh, had to know that bin Laden was there. Uh, to me, the most extraordinary thing about that compound was that it didn't have guards. Uh, he, here's the most wanted man in the world, and he's just got a couple of couriers with uh, small arms in the compound with him. That, that shows how secure they thought it was, and that didn't happen by accident. As you rightly point out, it's in a military town. The only question is, uh, is not whether ISI knew about it, but how high up the Pakistani military chain of command that knowledge went. And my guess is if uh, Pakistani intelligence was uh, was uh, fully aware and supporting uh, bin Laden. I'd be surprised if Chinese intelligence hadn't penetrated them thoroughly and that the Chinese knew about it, too. And the point you make about Riyadh and Islamabad, uh, I think it's going to be very interesting as we exploit the data on those hard drives that we took out of that compound, not only for what it tells us about al-Qaeda organizationally and operationally, but for what it tells us about what Pakistan knew and was doing and what the Saudis knew and were doing. John, how do we go forward with Islamabad now, or do we not go forward with them? I mean, what's the next step? Well, I think there have got to be some pretty unpleasant conversations with top leaders in Pakistan. Uh, but, you know, dealing with them uh, as they act on a duplicitous basis is something we've, we've had to put up with for decades. They, they spent the 1980s and much of the 1990s denying they had a nuclear weapons program when manifestly they did. And to me, that's what it comes down to. Uh, when, when, when some people talk about casting Pakistan off into the outer darkness, uh, they've got a substantial arsenal of nuclear weapons. And if we throw them over the side, they're going to take their nuclear weapons with them. And uh, they will unquestionably at that point be at risk of falling into the wrong hands. So uh, this, is, this is a choice of the lesser of two evils. And I think we've got to impress on the Pakistanis. I thought we had back on September the 12th, 2001, that they had to be either with us or against us. Obviously, they need another dose of that. Taking it on the face, the Obama administration so far evidenced plans of the handover of authority in Afghanistan to the Afghan National Army, the Afghan military, uh, the Afghan police, also included in that formula, as I read it, is a strong role for the Pakistan military, uh, especially along the Durand line, of uh, providing security for the cross-border attacks launched by Haqqani Network. But now, with this present apparent revelation that Pakistan is in league with the devil and is in fact was guarding one of the devil's allies, bin Laden, all these years. How can we offer a national policy in the United States to provide security to the, Afghanistan, uh, the people of Afghanistan by handing them off into the hands of the men who ran this operation in Abbottabad? Well, it can't work and it was never going to work. In fact, one of the reasons we had difficulty in the uh, federally administered tribal areas of Pakistan, Waziristan and elsewhere, was precisely because ISI, Pakistani intelligence, was so infiltrated by sympathizers to al-Qaeda and Taliban, and they would uh, leak uh, information about raids and other operations we want to conduct so that the Taliban and al-Qaeda could escape. Uh, and there's not going to be any security uh, on either side of that border until we solve both sides of the equation. That's why I think this is not the moment to withdraw from the Afghan theater. This is the moment to press our advantage. Uh, that's very nearly exactly the opposite of what I think uh, uh, President Obama is going to announce in the next several weeks. John Bolton, a former ambassador to the United Nations from the United States. He's the author of Surrender is Not an Option. He's a senior fellow at the American Enterprise Institute. Gordon Chang of The Daily and Forbes.com, and also a, um, a man who draws a lot of attention from Beijing's intelligence apparatus when he mentions them in connection with bin Laden. I'm John Batchelor. <laughs>